Hello, my name is Dave Hodgson and we very warmly welcome you to the uh, ASP Movement website. Please take time to watch this video as it is designed to give you uh, a full understanding of what it is that ASP is and for that matter what ASP isn't uh, so that you can make an educated decision as to whether to join us or not. The fact is we live in a world which is saturated with social and economic distress, uh, the symptoms of which are getting worse and worse and at some point in the not too distant future they will become unmanageable much as they always have throughout history. Such things as poverty and homelessness, uh, unemployment, unsustainable debt, drug and alcohol addiction, substance abuse uh, such as the ice epidemic currently sweeping our nation, uh, domestic violence, so many women are being beaten and killed in our families, it's just unbelievable. Uh, the suicide levels are high, uh, out of control crime, corruption is high even in this sophisticated country like Australia. Uh, we have very high recidivism, that's the repeat offending of prisoners, uh, trafficking in children, sex slavery, yes, sex slavery right here under our noses in Australia. There is hunger and starvation, there is still racism, there is still sexism, uh, and of course, on the economic front, the unfunded liabilities of our governments. Um, that is, of course, the making of election promises and post-election promises and commitments which can never be funded, they can never be paid for, just to get votes. Uh, this will inevitably lead to immense financial and social distress for our children and our grandchildren. Um, if we go further afield and we look at the first world, obviously the, uh, the third world, uh, um, obviously there are wars, uh, there are refugees streaming out of countries, there's persecution, there is feudalism and slavery, sectarianism, and of course corruption, corruption and more corruption. Third world is, is rabid as, is with corruption. Uh, now, the thing is, ladies and gentlemen, that all of these are symptoms of something. And if they are symptoms, there has to be a root cause for all of the above. And that root cause is actually a cultural issue, okay? It is the inbred culture of maximizing self-interest at the expense of others, which causes all of this distress. Or if you put it in modern, uh, as you see it in modern financial journals, it is the culture of greed, fear, and corruption that dominates or drives our capital markets. So this culture has driven the economies and the societies of indiv and the individuals of virtually all nations since time began. Uh, in Australia, it's taught from the cradle to the grave. Our junior and secondary education curriculum support this. Our universities and tertiary institutions teach it. Um, the focus being uh, uh, that we should compete with others to get a job. Uh, once we have the job, we must compete with others to get promotion. Uh, and the driving force behind the job and the promotion is to maximize our own benefit at the expense of the employer. At the same time, the driving force behind the actual employer is to squeeze every ounce of effort out of the employees for as little as possible remuneration. Okay, and more importantly, the overall objective of the business itself is to maximize their profits, uh, typically competing in the marketplace with a view to putting their opposition out of business. The opposition, incidentally, is their fellow Aussies, and we are deliberately trying to put them out of business, very often bankrupting them or subject them to other financial and social distress situations. And all of this is so that we can accumulate or hoard our assets uh, for ourselves in retirement. This is always achieved at the expense of others, ladies and gentlemen. That is its inherent nature. Um, and that is just the basics. What I've listed above you is uh, for you is just the basics. Before any corruption sets in, or political tyranny, or racism, or tribalism, or sectarianism, or sexism, or any other ism sets in and compounds the problem. This cannot work, it is obvious that it cannot work, uh, and it never has worked in the past and it never will in the future. If we continue to strive to put each other out of business, if we continue to create poor people, starving people, desperate people, every time we do a deal or, or, or do a transaction or pass a law, the financial and social distress accumulates to breaking point and uh, people uh, become so desperate that they rise up and society is plunged into anarchy and revolution. This has happened time and time again throughout history and other than force majeure, there are no exceptions. You, you have a look and see that you won't find any exceptions. The good news, ladies and gents, is that there is a way, there is a better way and there's a way that works perfectly. 
uh, the leaders of ASPM movement um, have tried and tested the better way for 14 years now and we've built businesses that are worth hundreds of millions of dollars by trading in a better way and acting in a better way and, and operating out of a different culture. So we must get rid of this failed culture and we must replace it with a culture of caring and sharing because that is what leads to universal prosperity. Uh, I know this sounds counterintuitive but uh, if we ensure that every party to every deal uh, prospers and that includes all of our social interactions as well then we will create people of means who can trade with us again who can trade with each other again and who can trade again and again and again if everyone does this uh, then the whole community prospers and we steadily eliminate systemic poverty and the social distress that I've listed above uh, as I said, we've been doing this for 14 years and we've built businesses worth hundreds of millions. We've hugely prospered our clients. We've hugely prospered our business counterparties um, whom you might regard as your opposition. And by default, we've prospered our communities based on this very culture. Uh, it's important to know that we don't do this because it feels good and, we don't, and, and because it appeals to our conscience. We simply do it because it works and because it is sustainable. And in fact, it is the only way a society, a nation or an economy can possibly be sustainable in the long term. Think about it. If your goal is to put your fellow Aussies out of business, you're going to have to pay for their welfare. Uh, wouldn't it be better if they were successful so that there is no welfare bill? So please take time to read through some of the case studies on this website and that'll give you an understanding of how well this works in a practical sense. Uh, we'll be building on those case studies, we've got lots of them to add. Um, dealing with the symptoms, of course it's imperative that we must deal with the symptoms of this failed culture. And yes, of course we must build orphanages, women's shelters, rehab clinics, food and medical aid and so on and so on. But simply by dealing with the symptoms uh, and not dealing with the root cause of the problem is tantamount to mopping up the water without switching off the tap. More and more taps are turned on, more and more water flows, we mop up more and more frantically ultimately we are overwhelmed and we drown. Um, we must address the cultural issue and if we do address this cultural issue public policy will follow. Public policy will have no effect if we don't change culture first. So I'm going to give you a, a short example of what, we're, what I'm talking about and, and you'll see uh, where a root cause uh, has a distinction from a, a symptom. Let's look at the uh, homelessness for women in Australia. The single largest cause of homelessness for women in all Australian states is domestic violence. Uh, and the single uh, largest cause for domestic violence is financial hardship. And of course, the root cause for most of the financial hardship is this culture of greed and self-centeredness that we've been working under for so long and we've been trading under and doing our transactions under. So it stands to reason then that if we deal with this economic culture of the nation and its people we will uh, reduce financial hardship and if we significantly reduce financial hardship we will reduce domestic violence and in turn we will reduce homelessness in women. This will also reduce the uh, physical and the financial trauma of the homeless women and it will result and it will reduce sorry the negative emotional and financial fallout from family breakdown including the welfare expense to the rest of the community. Uh, important to note that not all social distress is the result of economic issues but it is just about always the result of maximizing self-interest over others. For example, the trafficking, the sex trafficking of little girls. Um, this begs a question is why was somebody so desperate that they sold their beloved little girl into sex slavery and in the vast majority of cases we know that this is because of extreme poverty. Therefore if we deal with the root cause of the poverty we should solve, solve the problem, right? Wrong. You see there's another problem, the problem of supply and demand. Why is it, this begs the second question, why is it that there is a demand for sex with 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 year old little girls? So this is not an economic problem but a moral issue or a psychological issue. Uh, this business of having power and lust over a helpless child and this is best dealt with by experts in the moral or in the psychological instructions such as uh, psychologists, churches and other organizations. And yes I know uh, churches have also been infiltrated by bad culture um, as have all sectors of our community and we need to deal with that as well. There's no getting away from any of that. But look, here's what we propose as a solution. We've embarked on building the largest uh, body of singularly minded business owners that Australia has ever, ever seen, at least 150,000 on a single database or network. Uh, 
we're now we would love to have non-business owners employees mums and dads as well if we could have everybody in Australia then what a pleasure uh, you're all very very welcome but we need the business owners on board because it's they who are the most influential in the marketplace and it is they who have the ability to change culture quite quickly in the mar marketplace um, so ASP is an organization where everyone is on the same page all focused on building what we call a just nation and the just nation is driven by a preferred economy you can read the website and see what these what the interpretation of these are uh, this movement we've named it the ASP movement and obviously ASP is an acronym for all shall prosper in line with the broader vision so the objective is to use this huge network to form a collective voice and to undertake collective action and that action to eliminate the causes of the uh, and the symptoms of this incredible social distress caused by the failed culture um, what we propose has never been done before because we've got to keep in mind that we're forming a movement which will establish a counterculture to thousands of years of greed and corruption so it's a big job but it is entirely doable and it is especially doable by the business people this new culture has to start with us the business people we are the engine room of this nation uh, the nearly 2.4 million SMEs which represent 10% of our entire popular uh, population of Australia we are the ones who must do this uh, since we are the creators of enterprise since we are the higher achievers uh, and therefore it is our obligation to instigate this as a way of life it is entirely doable ladies and gentlemen we are already doing it and we are already prospering in the process okay so how will ASP achieve this firstly by demonstrating and proving to the public that the model actually works uh, secondly by teaching it to others showing them how to do it uh, teaching them giving them education on how to do it thirdly creating much much more enterprise nationally uh, than we already have in Australia we must understand that we will never tax ourselves into prosperity we must create ethical clean enterprise for to be sustainable in the long term and then fourthly by gathering ideas from which to form initiatives um, to achieve this fourth um, criteria uh, we will canvas our members for ideas we want your ideas ladies and gents from all walks of life man or woman indigenous or mainstream of faith or of not of faith we want the ideas of 150,000 business leaders filtering in uh, we will take these ideas uh, or the best of these ideas and we will create think tanks and discussion groups specialized in various sectors of the market and of society and then once we've, we've thrashed them out with these groups uh, we will develop these into initiatives and then we will implement the initiatives we will have petitions to influence government, media, education, church, enterprise, the lot. We'll have high level delegations to go and have meetings with all of the above. Uh, and as, as often as possible uh, and wherever possible, we will get on with these initiatives ourselves as opposed to uh, requiring government. Probably just need permissions and permits and so on. But we don't, if we can do it, if, if enterprise and business can do it, what a pleasure, much quicker. Uh, in terms of enterpri enterprise, um, one of the major visions of the ASP movement is promoting the greening of our continent okay we must make this entire continent livable by bringing water to the interior we do not have a choice in this matter we must understand this large-scale infrastructure uh, or sorry we must undertake this large-scale infrastructure if we are to prosper as a nation uh, making the interior an attractive place to live to do business with tax incentives and other social and economic incentives will be high on the agenda uh, promoting immigration of like-minded people uh, to populate the continent you know you might not have thought of this but we need at least double the current population in Australia we're not talking about crashing our borders and and uh, so on we're talking about structured immigration to achieve a specific society of caring sharing people whose objective is to create universal prosperity with 24 million people we hardly even have a domestic market which is why our car manufacturers and our other manufacturing industries are closing down and moving offshore we can't even defend the place without relying on others uh, who themselves are only reliable when it suits their self-interests okay important to understand that so propagating the new culture around the world is going to be a high objective of ours um, we are already doing that by lecturing all over the world our lectures are in demand in most continents around the world uh, so 
as I've said, our objective, the objective of ASPM is actually to have a collective voice and to be able to take collective action in order to implement change. So that's our objective. But in return for joining, we want to reward people for joining. It's always free. There's no, there's no charge for anything here, but we want you to have benefits for joining us. The benefits would be learning how to multiply your businesses. We've grown businesses from nothing to 100 million in, in less than three years. OK, we'll show you how to do that. Learning what works and what does not work in the marketplace, learning how to prosper others very very important uh, business opportunities you know the leaders of the ASPM movement um, are significant business owners we get many many opportunities that we can't even engage in we're too busy to do them we will pass these down to the membership base and you'll be able to get on with those if they suit you okay promoting your businesses at networking events uh, airing your ideas and having your ideas promoted and, and being being part of that and being part of something which is changing culture for the benefit of your children and your children's children. Those are the benefits to the members. Um, generally, most members do not even need to do much, just overtly belong to the group, understand the concept when asked, and trade the ASP way and rally to the cause when needed. That's what we're asking in return for what we're giving you. Uh, it is important to know what we are not, okay, because we can be accused of all sorts of manner or manner of things. But we are not a political party, we're not politically aligned, we are not a church, we are not the church, and we are not denominationally aligned. Uh, we're not some far-right group, uh, we're not a group of bigots, we welcome ideas from all walks of life and all peoples. We're not racist, we're not sexist, we're not homophobic, and we're not Islamophobic. <laughs> so we're none of those phobics, all right? Uh, but what we are, we are a like-minded network of mostly small to medium enterprise owners uh, who are focused on creating universal prosperity through the changing of culture and providing solutions to our social distress. We're an organization who value our posterity much more than we value our assets and our balance sheets. In other words, we're creating a society that our children can prosper in, not one of anarchy which is where we're heading at the moment. Uh, we're creating universal prosperity through growth and ethical enterprise, as I've mentioned. Uh, we are about phasing out corruption. We're about reducing red tape wherever possible. Uh, we're about reducing regressive taxation. We're about phasing out self-serving bureaucracy and replacing it with efficient, vision-focused professional administrations. Uh, we're about promoting leaders with sustainable national vision. We're about phasing in politicians or political leaders who are able to strategize, policy beyond the next election, which is quite rare. I don't want to be derogatory to our pollies because we love them, we work with them, we're very engaged in public policy, um, but it is, a, it is a problem. We're also about phasing in political leaders who are focused on the national interests and not necessarily on the self-serving interests of their own political parties. Um, and at the end of the day, we're setting up a benchmark economy and a society in a modern developed nation for other nations to follow and to copy. Australia is a very important nation on the world stage, but it only has a very small population. This makes it very much easier to reach a tipping point uh, for change. Um, and after 10 years of teaching this, there is massive momentum around the country now in the marketplace amongst the business people and the business leaders. And this indicates that Australia will be the first nation in the world to be a just nation, which others can follow in the future. Okay, so now that you've heard what ASP is all about, uh, and if you agree with what ASP is all about, and if you agree with what you've heard, please tick the box uh, that confirms you understand, um, and then please sign up and join the movement. We would love to have you on board. As I said, everything is free, and uh, you're just very welcome to join and become part of the largest and most influential coalition of business owners, business networks, marketplace ministries, and ethical people this nation has ever seen. Ladies and gents, let's use our collective voice to change culture uh, for the good of all Australians and then pass it on to the rest of the world. Thanks very much for joining us and welcome aboard. God bless.